this is an update to a previous project. Uh, obviously, this is part two of our calendar reservation project. What we're going to be adding is uh, the ability to check for prior events. So right now, our calendar, uh, someone submits to the spreadsheet, someone submits a form, it detects that through a trigger, it takes that info, and it outputs it to our calendar. However, we don't have the ability for it to check if there is a pre-existing event which can be an issue if you're using this for appointments or whatever. Uh, someone could schedule uh, uh, an event where one already exists. So starting out with function get conflicts. I'm debating ah, our variable names, I guess. All right, variable conflicts, because my endless creativity, however, it does make sense. This is going to be returning uh, any events that already exist within that area. Um, and I did have to look this up originally, so of course Google Apps Script is a great resource. We're going to use that get events function, start time, end time. I wanted to point out right here event length, because when they're returning it to the logger, they want to get the event length, because otherwise it just says object, or maybe it just says calendar object, but it's not that useful of information. However, the length tells us how many calendar are, or how many objects are there. So let's see what I got. Variable conflicts equals calendar. Uh, get events, that's what we had just looked up, and there's my request date, request end time, just like we had already had that end time and date. Uh, all of that established obviously in the last code. Oh, and I think, yes, here I am realizing that to have that end time, to have requ request have an end time key, I need to move that bit of code up into the get submission uh, function where I'm creating this object. So I'm just setting it up here. I'm replacing request because originally all of that was assigned and generated in our update calendar function, as you saw in the last video. Um, I'm now going to do that within the get submission function. So we're going to generate that end time. We're going to uh, declare that variable right within that get submission function. It will there be therefore be uh, part of the object created by that function, which I uh, name request, uh, and therefore it will become easier to reference in our get conflicts function when we're looking for a conflicting event in between the request date and then the end time of that requested appointment. Our end time was preset. I said each appointment would be an hour which is why this I'm editing right here, this in time set hours, in time get hours plus one. I simplify this just to use, since it's now within this get submission function, I think I use this dot time, yep, uh, which is identical to the this dot date set minutes, this dot time get minutes, this in time dot set hours, this dot time get hours, um, because Except, except for the plus one. The end time, again, we were pushing out one hour. Uh, and we wouldn't need to change the minutes within the end time because that would already match the minutes from the earlier this date. All right, now I'm going to log. And like I said earlier, to log this, we really do need to use a length. Otherwise, it's just going to tell us that this object exists as opposed to one event, two events, and that can be useful um, or helpful information. I'm now adding it to our main function, so we actually run it. Get conflicts, requests, that looks like some standard stuff. Save. And let's see what we got here. I am, okay, I'm going through and submitting more information. I'm submitting another form. Um, I have added a get email. Um, I have added a request to use people's email on this. So that's new. You can see my email right there. Um, and you'll see why we're now using the form to gather email as well in a second. So I just submitted more information to be used. Let's double check on it. Yep, there it is. Mickey Mouse, cough. And there it is on the calendar. And at this point, I need to comment out update calendar because we're going to run it again 
because we do want to see that it checks if there is a conflict and I do not want it to create a second event. So I save, let's debug, and let's look at that log, right? So hopefully it logged the length of a conflict, which should be one because we just ran it again. Yes, we ran it again on that last entered data on Mickey Mouse. So that was successful. It does see that an event is already in existence. And now we're going to go ahead and take out that log statement and finish up this function with a, yeah, worth return conflicts. And, oh, I caught myself. It should be length. Phew. Good. Not a bug this time. All right. So we're returning the length of conflicts. We can use that now to set up an if statement in our main function. If, I'm working on it, ah, I have the genius idea to zoom in again. If, there we are, if get conflicts, and then what we're going to do is since we know it returns an integer, we want the integer to be zero. So yes, I use uh, less than one. And let's close the bracket. Ah. And this way, an event will only be created if no conflicts are returned, preventing people from double booking. I'm going to run it again, and if you recall that Mickey Mouse data, each time we run it, it goes to that last row, so it's just running it over that Mickey Mouse data again and again. And notice there are no more events because it, it is preventing that from occurring. What I plan for this next, in the next video, um, is to set up an email alert system. And that, uh, that email alert will it will send out an email directly letting you know if your event was successfully planned or if it was not. Right now, I'm testing it to prove once I comment out this get conflicts function, it's going to double book Mickey. So again, uh, what I plan for the next video, the next step is to set up an email that will go out saying, yes, your appointment has been booked or no, your appointment was fail failed to be booked due to a conflict. Come look at the calendar again.